What's going on, Packer fans? Welcome back to another episode of the Pack-A-Day Podcast. I'm your host, Andy Herman. You can follow me on Twitter at Andy Herman NFL. Thanks so much for being here today. Really excited about today's episode. We're going to be going over Keyshawn Nixon. And no, we're not going to be going over Keyshawn Nixon, the all-pro kick returner. Not, we're not going to be going over Keyshawn Nixon, the punt returner. We're not going to be going over Keyshawn Nixon, the special teams ace. We're going to be going over Keyshawn Nixon, the defensive back, the corner, the slot guy, the star, whatever you want to call it. That's what we're going to be going over today because as of right now, we don't a million percent know exactly what's going on with Eric Stokes. When asked about sort of the slot nickel star position in this offseason, the Packers have basically said that Keyshawn Nixon is going to get the opportunity to win that spot. As I'm going into this training camp, preseason, regular season, etc., I'm expecting Keyshawn Nixon to have a real opportunity to play serious snaps in the slot in 2023, even to the point being that when Eric Stokes comes back, I don't know that I necessarily expect it to be just Stokes and then, you know, Jair Alexander, uh, along with Razul Douglas as your top three corners. I'm not so certain that Keyshawn Nixon isn't going to be the guy in the slot for 2023. Now, a lot can happen. There's a lot of different possibilities. It wouldn't surprise me in certain games if Green Bay wanted to go with Jair Alexander in the slot, especially if Justin Jefferson or AJ Brown are going to play a ton in the slot, whoever they're playing against, obviously. Like if they're going to see a ton of a specific really good wide receiver in the slot, like do you want Jair to move in there? Sure. And then in that situation, do you see Razul and Stokes on the outside because Keyshawn's not as much of an outside corner? Yeah, I think there's a very much a world in where that those opportunities exist. But if you're talking right now, the base nickel corner in Green Bay for 2023, I think you're looking at a lot of Keyshawn Nixon. And that brings up a variety of questions as to how that affects his special teams. Is he going to play uh, a full, you know, special teams snaps as well this upcoming season? Is he going to remain kick returner and punt returner? All those things we will get to. But in one way, shape or form or another, I expect him to get a lot of opportunity in the slot. And for that reason, I wanted to go over what he brings to the table as a slot corner. And thankfully, he actually had 290 snaps a season ago in Green Bay as a slot corner. He played a little on the outside, but the vast, vast, vast majority of those were slot snaps. And what I did is I went back and I watched every single snap of Keyshawn Nixon's in 2022 on defense to get a feel for what he could potentially be and bring to the table this upcoming season in that position. Now, before we get there, I thought it'd be a little bit fun to go over his scouting report coming out of college. So this is Lance Zerline's scouting report coming out of college for Keyshawn Nixon as a corner. Interestingly, not once does it mention anything about special teams, kick returning, punt returning, etc. I just thought that's interesting in hindsight. That's not a diss on Lance Zerline. Even Green Bay a season ago in his fourth season, after playing with Rich Passaccia for all that time, did not know that he was going to be a dynamic returner or they would have had him in over Amari Rogers much sooner than they did a season ago. So just interesting to look back on. But this is all free on NFL.com. And by the way, I do feel like we talk about all the amazing draft analysts out there. I don't feel like Lance always gets the credit that he deserves. He is a tremendous uh, just scout and everything that he does for NFL.com is amazing. But this was his scouting report for Keyshawn Nixon coming out of college. So he projected him as a sixth or seventh round draft pick. Remember, he was undrafted eventually. He was a former Juco corner with just one year of starting experience who has the frame, speed, and competitiveness to warrant a deeper dive as a developmental, developmental corner. Excuse me. Nixon plays with a strength to crowd receivers to and annoy the catch point, but he loses leverage and coverage positioning too easily due to a lack of discipline and pattern recognition. He's a feisty tackler with great makeup burst who figures to improve with more seasoning but his lack of length and leaping could limit any potential upside. Here's what Lance lists as strengths for Keyshawn Nixon, again, coming out of college. Sun burst back downhill from side shuffle, has closing speed to challenge in the passing lane, good makeup burst when beaten, plays with nimble feet in tight quarters, super competitive to hound receivers out of their breaks, maintains feel for routes from tight man, crowds and assails the catch point, plays with strength to fluster unimaginative route runners, Closes downhill like he means it as a tackler. We'll go over that. Sees what he hits and fights his way past blockers on receiver screens. We're going to go over that as well. Some weaknesses. Allowed 58% completion rate. Lacks experience and confidence from press. Sticky hips when flipping up to sprint. Needs to cover with better discipline and patience. Loses coverage leverage to basic fakes. 
Overreactions downfield leads to flags. Eagerness gets the best of him. Below average route recognition. Gets lazy finding the football and defaults to reading receiver's eyes. And short arms with disappointing three cone and short shuttle numbers. Now, full transparency, I did my full review of Keyshawn Nixon uh, before I read any of this. So it's insane to see some of these things, both in the strengths and the weaknesses, come up again as I was reviewing him at, you know, from what he did a season ago. But interesting to go and read back what Lance had as his strengths and weaknesses coming out of college. And a lot of those things still prevalent. But of course, you know, by the way, he's also an all pro kick returner, first team all pro kick returner and punt returner, I might add. So that's where we were at from a scouting report coming out of college. Now, this past season, if you want to go by PFF's grades, PFF had a 61.2 grade on him and a coverage grade of 60.4. Now remember, average is 60. So they had an, basically a slightly above average overall grade on him as a defensive back and a average grade on him as a pure coverage corner. So that, I want to just say right away, that is not bad. If you are a average level anything in the NFL, that is worthwhile. That is a good football player. So it may sound like disparaging or just like average, whatever, but that's a pretty solid football player and somebody that you can use on your team almost every single time. My grade on him from a season ago, as I did my grades, was plus 0.65. So zero is average for me, is like the, the baseline neutral grade, right? So he was slightly above average. Both PFF and I had basically a very similar grade on him. Now, the difference being is I actually had him as the sixth highest graded defender in large part because a lot of players underperformed on defense and you know under Joe Barry a season ago. He was also my third highest graded defender on a per play basis. Remember, he didn't play very many snaps. So the fact that he was the sixth highest graded defender with as few snaps as he played goes to show that maybe there was a little bit left that maybe they could have got out of him had they played him there a little bit more. And like I said, my third highest graded defender on a per play basis last year. So there was something to what Keyshawn Nixon was doing on defense, but right around a average to slightly above average player in limited snaps from a season ago. Now also per PFF, these were his coverage numbers last year. He was targeted 29 times, allowed 23 completions for a 79.3% completion percentage. That is very bad. 239 yards, 10.4 yards per catch, a long of 43, one touchdown, one interception, one penalty, and a 98.1 passer rating. So ideally you would like to see him break up a little bit more of those completions and make them incompletions, just get his hands on the ball a little bit more. Those are some things that you would like to see. Not atrocious numbers, only 239 yards allowed, 10 yards per catch, long of 43, only one touchdown. They're not brutal numbers, but certainly you would like to see the efficiency be a little bit better in 2023 than maybe it was in 2022. A lot of that though, as I went back and watched it, a lot of off-man coverage or even off-zone coverage and sort of coming up and tackling just a lot of the stuff that we saw to Joe Barry. There were certain things, especially in the Tampa game when he played, where at, you know the, the last drive of the game, they were playing a little bit deep, trying to keep everything in front of them. And I think two or three of those completions were right on him and there's nothing he really could have done about it. He made the tackle like he was supposed to. So some of that stuff just comes inherently, but you would like to see it be a little bit better. Now, here are some positives that I had in my scouting notes from watching him in every snap from 2022. The first one is his infectious energy and the mentality that he plays with that corner. Now, I'll be honest here as well. This wasn't a lot from the tape. It's tough to tell from all 22 tape, like how much energy he's bringing in those sort of things. But I saw it in OTAs and mini camps every single day. Him being out on the field and having that passion, that intensity, it was it was like literally contagious on defense. And you could just see, it was like a, almost a Jair Alexander sort of, um, you know, swagger and just, you know, um, energy about him. And you need that type of energy on defense. Defense is hard. It, it just is really, really hard in the modern NFL. And playing corner is brutal. Like we are in a golden age of wide receivers, in my opinion. Like there are fantastic wide receivers on just about every single team. And trying to shut those wide receivers down on a play by play basis when you can't really grab, you can't touch them five yards down the field, like you can't intimidate with a Chuck Cecil over the middle who's just going to knock your head off. Like it is a passing league and having that mentality and defense where you're going to bring the energy and it doesn't matter if you just allowed a completion, you're going to get right back and play with that same energy on the very next down. He has that. And there's just something about Keyshawn Nixon. I'm a firm believer that some people just find a way to get the job done no matter what. And I think Keyshawn Nixon has a lot of that in him. Like, 
you need to, you need me to be a kick returner? Sure. I'll just go out and be a first team all pro kick returner out of absolutely nowhere. Oh, you need me to return punts now too? Sure. I'll do that on an insane, insanely high level as well. Oh, you need me to be a core special teams guy? Don't worry. Got that for you as well, which is why I was brought to the team originally and why Rich Passaccio wanted me here in the first place. Oh, you, your corner went down and you need me to play in the slot a bunch? All right. No, I got that too. I'll go out and play corner and force fumbles and get interceptions and do those sort of things as well. So like, there's just certain people. And that's why I think like, Hey, you need to play him on offense for a handful of snaps here or there. He'll, he'll probably find a way to get that job done too. Like that's just the type of player he has been throughout his career. Whenever he has been given an opportunity, he has made the most of it. And he just has that mentality and he goes out and does it on a day-to-day basis. And I'm excited about him in the slot because I think that's going to continue as he gets more opportunity. Every, t- every single time in the NFL, he's been given an opportunity. He said, yeah, give it to me. I'm going to own it. I'm going to do it a great job of it. And he's gone out and done it. And a lot of that, I believe, is because of the confidence and the swagger that he plays with. This is not a person who is lacking for confidence in any way. But as I mentioned at the onset here, it's not just him playing with confidence. He has that mentality that is infectious to his teammates as well. And you can see everyone else building off of his energy. And when you've got two guys like that in your secondary with Jair Alexander and Keyshawn Nixon, I really believe and hope that that is going to spread to the rest of that defensive backfield, the linebackers, the edge rushers, etc., and really make it so that this defense can find some sort of identity. But that was number one as a positive for Keyshawn Nixon. Number two is he has the right build for the position. It is very hard to find slot corners in the NFL because you have to kind of do everything, right? Now, I've talked about in the past, Charles Woodson is the 1A if you could design a star slot corner, nickel corner, whatever you want to call it in a lab, it is Charles Woodson because he's basically an extra edge rusher. If you want to use him, basically an extra outside linebacker, like he converts your defense from a nickel defense to a three, four, because he can go from a corner to an outside linebacker like that. He can stop the run. He can be a blitzer slash basically edge rusher off the edge. He can cover man to man. He can cover zone. He can drop in safety if you need him to like that is Charles Woodson is the guy. And like the only guy that's come close to doing that is like prime Jalen Ramsey. And it wasn't in my opinion, close to what Woodson did in his prime. But Keyshawn Nixon has a little bit. Now, I'm not comparing him to Jalen Ramsey or Charles Woodson. So let's just make that abundantly clear right now. But he's got good enough size. He's 5'10", he's 200 pounds. He has enough weight on him that he can handle the running game, handle the blitzing, be a run stopper, be a tackler, and not be like, all right, I'm going to be one of these undersized corners who, yeah, it's great that I can stick with the shifty guys because I have all that agility. But if you run at me, we're going to be in major trouble. He has enough size to hold up at the point of attack. And that's something that's really important at that position. He also has really good speed and acceleration. So if there's guys that are trying to get down the field on him and he has to cover them man to man or zone, whatever he's in, he has the ability to stick with him with speed. And while he's not the most agile guy, as mentioned, you know, from uh, the, the scouting report where he didn't do well in the three cone and the short shuttle, he's not the greatest change of direction guy. There's a couple of plays. Go watch him against Scotty Miller against Tampa Bay and watch him stick with him on a route that, you know, I thought Miller did a really great job of trying to shake Nixon and Nixon just kind of stuck with him. So he has a little bit of everything where he can stick with some of the shiftier guys. He can stick with the faster guys. He can stick with the bigger guys. And he can also blitz off the edge. He can hold up against the run. There's just not a lot of people in the NFL, even like the best of the best corners, like Jair, for example. Jair's an amazing corner, but if you play him full time in the slot, like he's just going to get eaten alive sometimes by pulling guards and tackles and tight ends. And like it's really hard for a guy that at that size to hold up at the point of attack. And you don't want Jair blitzing and doing all that stuff where he's got to like try to jar a running back in the backfield. Like you, you want to see Jair covering on the outside, right? So, there's a certain mentality, a certain physicality, and a certain body type that you have to have to play in the slot. And I feel like Nixon really has that at 5'10", 200 pounds. His first step acceleration and closing speed are fantastic. And just that, like, that's what makes him really good as a kick returner, right? It's his decisiveness and it's his acceleration and that first step quickness where he is able to find a hole and then hit it with speed and acceleration. And at corner, he has a lot of that same thing. You will see him where there's a quick screen to the outside and he puts his foot in the ground and attacks it with pace. There's plays where there are guys that are trying to run the seam down him and he's got that ability to turn, hit that first step acceleration and stick right with them. So that 
like plays very, very well at that corner position as well. His blitzing off the edge, same thing. First step acceleration, before you know it, he's in the backfield. Everything that makes him good as a kick returner is certainly going to help him as well at that corner position. Uh, he has speed up the seam as we just discussed, but there's a great play against Tampa Bay where he is going up the seam and they're trying, you know, they're, they're trying to hit up the seam and he sticks with it stride for stride and, you know, gets his hand up at the very last second. Yeah. Eyes on the ball, gets his head turned and makes a play on the ball and the ball falls incomplete. Like those are the sort of things that you are seeing from him in that slot corner position. He is not afraid to get up and press. So if you remember in the scouting report, one of the things is that he was not confident in press. I actually think now he is better in press than he is in off coverage. Like he feels very comfortable and confident playing press to the point where like Joe Barry now needs to see Jair better in press. Razul, much better in press. Keyshawn, better in press. You have three corners who are better in press and I get wholeheartedly you cannot play press man on every play. Like if you are in trips that you're going to get eaten alive because you're basically, they're going to pick you and you're going to be in a disadvantageous position. You just can't do it. Like you, if, and if you consistently do anything in this league over and over and over, teams are just going to eat you alive because every team has specific press man coverage beaters in their playbook. They have cover four beaters. They have cover three beaters. And if you become like consistent with what you're doing and predictable, they're just going to go to those things and they're going to run you out of the ballpark. So uh, that's you can't just do it over and over, but it's time to recognize that what these three corners do best is probably press man. And you need to do a bit more of it, especially in some of those obvious passing downs where they're not in trips, they're not in bunch, they're not in motion, and they're just going three wide and trying to beat you down the field. Let your corners do what they do best. But I think he is very, very good in press coverage. And I think that's something that he's even going to get better on as he plays the position more. That speed again plays as a edge rusher as well. He is a very good blitzer. Um, I do think he needs to do a better job of getting more physical against running backs. Like if you have the opportunity to, to, to you know, get on a running back and try to get through them, you need to find a way to do that. I thought he got stuffed and stymied a little bit by running backs too often on some of those blitzes. But the thing that I really like about him is besides the speed where he accelerates very fast off the edge he doesn't tip his blitzes at all. And he also does a really nice job of fainting like he's going to blitz and then going back in coverage. I will say, I think he needs to do a little bit better job where like I could almost start anticipating like, oh, he's pretending to blitz. So he's for sure not going to blitz. And like, oh, he's not looking like he's going to blitz is all like, is, is he going to blitz? But he doesn't tip it in any way, shape or form. And that is a really strong sign. There are so many corners that do such an awful job of tipping their blitzes and showing that they're coming and the wide receiver communicates it to the quarterback. You get a quick hitter on the outside and it's just game over, right? Nixon's very good at disguising it. And that's something that I think is going to serve him very, very well. Uh, he can line up against all slot types. So I saw him line up against tight ends, shifty wide receivers, bigger wide receivers. He did a really nice job of hanging with AJ Brown in a handful of snaps against Philadelphia. So he showed that he can cover a variety of different types in the slot, which again, just like that's a really difficult thing to do because you'll see 6'6", like Luke Musgrave-esque tight ends in the slot. You'll see big physical wide receivers like AJ Brown. And then you'll see like the Scotty Millers and the shifty or like, you'll see everything. And the fact that he can hang with kind of all of those types is really impressive. And I was like overall um, excited about what he did, just covering all those different types of players in 2022, albeit in limited snaps. He attacks wide receiver screens. You love that mentality. He's got the speed to do it. He'll put his foot in his ground, in the ground, and he'll get out there. He made a great play. I think it was against Philadelphia. You're going to see the picture here in just a second if it's not already up there. Uh, but he did a great job, um, you know, attacking that screen and getting somebody, to, you know, getting the, the wide receiver to the ground immediately. He'll take on blocks in the running game, which is what you love to see. He had playmaking. He had the interception against the Chicago Bears. He had a forced fumble against Tampa Bay that ended up in a big fumble recovery. So in limited snaps, he was already making some big plays. The interception against Chicago was their last offensive play in the game. I think they had a double digit lead at the time. So they were pretty comfortably going to probably win that game anyway, but it still, still was the, the game sealer at that moment. He does a really nice job tackling and staying on balance. And there was even an, uh, a play, a couple plays where you know that they love to take Darnell Savage down and have him play in that robber role because he's so good at it. So what they would do on a couple different plays is Nixon would be lined up in the slot, 
but to sort of disguise and confuse quarterbacks, Savage would come up and play the robber and Nixon would go back and play like the, the cover two safety and be one of the safeties down the field. And they would do that post snap. So Savage would come screaming down and Nixon would go screaming back and it would be Nixon across from Amos at the time as your two safeties. So he just brings a little bit of that to the table as well, which is really, really fun. Now, some negatives, his fluidity and man coverage was a bit of an issue. He allowed too much separation, and that's where you get that completion percentage that I noted earlier. He, again, he's not the most, um, you know, the best change of direction, and most agile guy in the world. And when you're matched up against some of these super fluid wide receivers who have all the head fakes and like are going to do everything to gain separation, he's just a little bit stiff in the hips, and that just slows him down a little bit. But you'll see sometimes these you know receivers get fairly significant separation against him. So that's something he needs to do a little bit of a better job on. This is not something that is Keyshawn Nixon specific, but there were so many different communication breakdowns and just guys like going in wrong directions where like you're trying to pass things off and things didn't get passed off. There were a handful of plays that Keyshawn was involved in. There were a handful of plays that every defensive player basically was involved in last year where that happened. That just has to get cleaned up in general and is not just a Keyshawn Nixon issue, but you did see it happen with him on a couple of different occasions. He's a bit too over aggressive at times, which if you remember from the uh, the scouting report from Lance Zerline, that was something that he noted in college. I noted this as well in the regular season. Um, he'd be just a bit too over aggressive. There's, if you remember last year, Justin Fields had that like 70 yard touchdown run in the second game against Green Bay. Keyshawn Nixon was on a blitz on that play and had basically Justin Fields dead to rights. Now. To be fair to Keyshawn, nobody has Justin Fields dead to rights. So like he, Justin Fields is just a spectacular athlete, right? So Fields makes a move, gets around Nixon, then he's just gone. But, you know, we, we talk about Joe Barry all the time. Like, oh, Joe Barry's got to be better. Well, in this specific play, he schemed up a free blitzer, in this case, Keyshawn Nixon, to get Justin Fields for a, probably like an eight yard sack on the play. Instead, Fields makes Nixon miss. Nixon makes a little bit like just a little bit over aggressive and Fields is gone for like, I don't know, 50, 60, whatever it is, yard touchdown run. Like sometimes it's, the players have to go out and execute. And that was a little bit of an over-aggressive play. And again, just tip your cap to Justin Fields as well. Uh, but also you saw it in, in pass coverage as well. He would bite on double moves and just be a little bit over-aggressive on some of that, going out and trying to make a play, which you love from Keyshawn. But you know, sometimes you have to be a little bit more fundamentally sound and make sure that you're not giving up some of those big plays. He didn't get hurt on it too much, but there were plays that were out there where there could have been some big completions because Keyshawn got a little bit out of control or a little bit over aggressive. So that's something you can work on a little bit. I thought in breaking routes gave him a little bit of an issue as did double moves. And then the other thing I'd like to see him be a little bit better at just based on his special teams prowess is getting off of blocks from wide receivers. I thought wide receivers blocked him a little bit too easily. I was expecting as I went back and watched this for Keyshawn to get off of those blocks rather easily. And I didn't always see that. I saw him get blocked a, a little bit too easy for my liking, just based on like, this is a, like, we know the dog mentality that Keyshawn has, right? Like he's not afraid of anything. So I thought he was going to be shedding these wide receivers and going making plays. I didn't always see that. And maybe that's just being safe and making sure that it's not like a flea flick or whatever. But I thought there could have been um, a little bit more of a concerted effort to get off of some of those blocks and try to go make plays in the running game. But he, he plays aggressive, so I'm not super concerned over it. But I thought there was an opportunity there to be a little bit better. Overall, I thought he was a slight plus in the slot, which has a ton of value. I think he's going to get even better by playing more in 2023. As I mentioned, every opportunity that he's been given in this league, he has succeeded at. So if he gets a full-time job as a slot corner, you know what I think he's going to do? Freaking succeed at it because he's done it everything else that he's done and put his mind to in the NFL. How is this going to affect him as a returner? I think that's going to be a question mark. And as a special teams player, like if he, all of a sudden he's playing 800 snaps this season as a slot corner... Like, is he also going to be the full-time kick returner, punt returner, special teams guy? That stuff starts to add up pretty fast. And you have to wonder of like, all right, if, if you're going to have him be the punt returner, like he just played like, you know, maybe five, six snaps of defense. Um, is he now going to go back and return punts as well? I think there's a chance that maybe Jaden Reed is the punt returner and Keyshawn maybe is the kick returner, but we'll see how that affects his special team snaps if he gets a huge increased workload as a corner. And again, if that affects him as a returner, that could be a little bit of a loss too. So they're going to have to balance out, you know, just how his snaps kind of take place this upcoming season. But overall, 
excited what he's going to continue to do as a returner, excited what he's going to do on defense. And I expect him to have a very nice season. And I would never bet against Keyshawn Nixon in any capacity at this point. And if he goes out and has a huge season in a contract year as a defensive back, knowing already what he can do as a returner, he is going to get paid in 2024, whether it be by Green Bay or some other team. That's going to do it for me today. Hope you enjoyed this breakdown of Keyshawn Nixon. I know I did. So hopefully you guys did as well. If you did, hey, hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed already. I'll see you guys right back here tomorrow kicking off a new series. So you're not going to want to miss it. But until next time, and as always, go Pack Go.